I'm Londa Rolfing. I love to teach creative sewing. I do that through my blog, on my YouTube channel, with my books and patterns, and also at my home studio. My newest candy store is the thrift store. I just love to go to the thrift store. Let me show you some of the things I've created lately using sweaters. Come back here and look at these with me. Here we have a man's sweater and the rust sweater and the brown sweater, so three sweaters. Obviously this heathery sweater has become the main part of the garment. I took the neckband of this garment and put it down here at the center front. I took the lower ribbing of the brown sweater and made it be the neckline. And I took the neckline of the brown sweater and made it just be this back neck. And then the vertical cable, cabling that was on the brown sweater became the horizontal back yoke. And then that rust sweater, it was wool. So I threw it in the washer and dryer to make it felt. It became very compact so that I could cut it in narrow strips. Then on top of that, I couched some yarn. In fact, this is the wrong side of the sweater. I also repeated this rust color in the cuffs and to give the lower silhouette of this garment some more shape, I put in some godets. I actually worked very hard to stretch out the bottom of this main sweater so that it really had a little bit of flair. The other thing design-wise I want to teach you is, do you see how this boucle cream-colored yarn just helps your eye travel all over the garment? I'll show you later how I couch that down. This is what I call a memento garment. This um, sweater belonged to my late brother. Another memento garment is this one. This is a sweater. It was a horizontal stripe chenille sweater that belonged to my daddy. Again, this was the lower ribbing of the sweater. This is a horizontal striped sweater. I also had this burgundy color chenille top that I was just too hot in. So this is actually a garment that looks like an underpiece and an overpiece, but it's actually just one piece. I've got two layers in the front, but just one in the back. Here you have one of my sweatshirt jackets. This part is a sweatshirt. This is, again, the wrong side of this sweater. These two center fronts here were actually the raglan sleeve of this sweater. And then I have a mauve colored sweater. The lower ribbing again became the neckline. And you can see how I tucked it in at the back. Once again, what is it that pulls it all together? It's the yarn that I couched down. I twisted a green yarn and a mauve yarn together, zigzagged over them with a clear thread. And then I have a focal point being this button. When you're combining one fabric with another, and usually the one that's the knit, you really need to stabilize it so that it doesn't stretch out of shape. So I hope you're now inspired. Let me give you some more how-tos. When you're looking at sweaters and it's time to start to cut them apart, always, always, always cut the parts too big. You have to have a seam allowance to sew it on with. So you'll want to take if I was cutting off this neck ribbing, I would not cut it real close. I would cut it leaving a generous seam allowance. And I don't throw any parts of the sweater away until I'm completely done. Knit garments are put together one of two ways. They're either surged together, as this one is done, or it's actually knitted together. And you can tell those seams when it, it just looks kind of rolled like this. Then you can really just get in here and cut them apart. If it's surged together, you're just going to cut on one side of the seam or the other. It's amazing to me how you can boss knits around. Look what I did with the lower ribbing of this sweater. It was just this big, and this was its natural shape. But when I attacked it with my steam iron, pinned it to this board, and really blocked it into shape, you can see that now it's much longer. So I could do something completely different with it. Some tools that you'll want to be sure to use. I find that size 90 um, stretch needle is the one that's perfect for going through the heaviness of sweaters. A walking foot, that will help things not stretch out at your sewing machine. I was talking about couching down the yarns. I like to use monofilament thread in my needle and in my needle only. Lower your upper tension just a little bit, 
set it on a zigzag of about three long and just as wide as you need to go over the yarns. So you'll just lay the yarn down on top and zigzag over it and it'll look like it's just floating on top. If you do creative sewing, I give you complete permission to have a stash. You have to have a stash of everything, including buttons. I organize my buttons by color. And the other thing I really want to draw your attention to is to always look at the reverse side of buttons. Do you see how this one is a totally different color on the back than it is on the front? Here's that stabilizing tape. This is straight grain stabilizing tape. So I will put that on the knit part of what I'm joining together so that it doesn't stretch out of shape. With those few hints, I think you'll have a good time sewing with sweaters, recycling them. I especially like to use garments from people from my family. It makes really special pieces. The next thing I'm going to show you is a wonderful way of setting in sleeves using only six pins. Years ago, I went to a European factory trained seamstress begging her to teach me how to set in a sleeve. I had tried everything, ease stitching, steaming, sleeve side down, nothing to me worked good enough. And she said, Londa, it's all in the fingers. I'm gonna show you what she taught me, which is the only way that I have set in sleeves for 47 years. So come look close. The first thing you need to realize is you need to mark things very carefully. There are dots and there are notches. A single notch in the back, a double notch in the back, both on the garment and on the sleeve. But one thing a lot of people forget is those dots. The dots on the sleeve and the front and back are equally important to match. And then if it's a dropped yoke or something, you do want to mark where the top of the sleeve joins into the arm side. With all of those things marked in six pins, one pin at the bottom of the whole armhole, one pin at the top, one pin at each of the dots, and one pin at each of the notches. To save time, I have sewn around, starting here at this notch, around past the other notch, and up to the dot. In that distance, there really is no easing that happens. And I have two different colors of fabric here so that you can really see the magic of what's going on, and also contrasting color thread in both the top and the bottom. The other thing you might want to do is take a marker and mark your seam line on the sleeve. Now understand, the sleeve is up. I want to see what I'm easing into the armhole. You have to have some kind of tool. I like this point presser creaser. You can use the tip of a scissors. You can use a seam ripper. And what she said was, Londa, you just have to ease it in in each and every stitch. So just watch, I've got my needle down on. You might wanna put slow speed on. Now I have already come around to the top of the sleeve at the very top inch or so, there really isn't any ease. The thing of it is, is that the sides of a sleeve are biased and because the bias grain is there, you can really just work in all of that fullness. You really can. Now this is hard work. If one of these cameramen came up here and pressed my arms, they would see that my muscles are really tensed. I'm working at this. I'm not just saying, oh, it's not gonna go in. It will go in if you work at it. So I'm going very slow. If you have slow speed on your machine, that's a great feature, employ it. Tall man finger is very important. Do you see how much fullness I've got to get in here? I'm going to plant my tall man and then know that I've got to work in that much fullness. So now I'm going to speed up a little bit here. One of the things you need to do is to keep your edges even, but you know, if that's not exactly perfect, chances are it's not going to matter that much. So we're going to keep going here. Do you see how I take my pusher and push it in at each and every stitch? And now I'm home free. I'm down to that dot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out and show you what a nice smooth sleeve cap I have. And if it has any wobbles in it, you can always go back now with the garment side up and fix any wobbles. Give it a try, work at it, you'll love it.